Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Bryson Loffmiller, and uh, this is Anatomy of a Distributed Credential Stuffing Attack, or uh, Botnet's Cred Stuffing and Password Dumps, a Podium Story. Um, so my name is Bryson. I work as a manager of security engineering at Podium, which is a tech company over in Lehigh. We do interaction management uh, for local businesses. And for four years before that, I was at uh, Adobe doing various things. Uh, and I do, I have a number of uh, different hobbies at which I am uh, mediocre. So uh, I've got a ton of information that we're going to go through here uh, and not a lot of time to do it. So this is going to be a speed run talk and with many tangents. So uh, off to the races. So to start off, i um, just going to go through some basic terminology. Uh, Brute force attack, you hear this a lot. Uh, brute force attack is when you have a single username and you are trying multiple passwords against it, trying to find the correct password, uh, like shown here. In a credential stuffing attack, though, you have multiple different usernames, usually with a single password, usually from a password dump or a uh, data breach of some sort, and you're just trying each individual username and password combination, hoping that you get something, some success along the way. Uh, botnet. You've probably heard this term a lot. Generally, a botnet is a group of compromised devices all controlled by a command and control server of some sort uh, or multiple command and control servers depending on how it's set up. Uh, usually, each one of those bots is compromised via some sort of malware that is making a call home and whenever the command and control sends out a, a signal, the bots do uh, what, they, what the command and control wants them to do. Uh, so first tangent, uh, the Mirai botnet. So some of you may have heard of the Mirai botnet. This was one that was uh, at, its, at its heyday in, in 2016. Uh, this particular botnet was an IoT botnet and was mostly comprised of uh, IoT devices like cameras, uh, you know, uh, any, any IoT type of device, fridges, uh, toasters, anything that's on the internet nowadays, which is uh, pretty much everything. Uh, and so in this particular instance, you've got your, your camera that somehow gets weaponized and you've got potentially tens of thousands of them out on the internet, uh, all combined with the other IoT things, and they're attacking some sort of service. So. Uh, in, in Mirai, uh, you laugh at the Minecraft, but the Mirai botnet was actually originally created for the purpose of taking out competitor Minecraft servers. So the original owner uh, ran a DDoS protection service and attacked his very own clients uh, and hired out the botnet to take out Minecraft servers. So uh, that was its original purpose. Uh, in October, October 21st of 2016, uh, they attacked Dyn DNS. Uh, which was a, was a major, you know, DNS uh, hub for uh, for many, many, many different services, and uh, took it out for oh yeah, 600,000 devices. Uh, took out all of these different services: Twitter, Amazon, Netflix, CNN, all the things uh, for five hours, mostly on the East Coast, but uh, caused significant amounts of panic uh, and uh, you know, sparked lots of inquiry into this. Uh, which led, uh, some of you may know who Brian Krebs is. He's a security uh, journalist, writes a lot of really interesting stories about different uh, security topics, does really good investigative journalism. Uh, on September 22nd, uh, he was hit with a 620 gigabit per second uh, attack, not him personally, but his website, uh, and the whole website was forced offline for four days. Uh, and sometime later, OVH, which is a, a French hosting company, was hit with a one terabit per second attack from this same botnet, all from IoT things, which I think is crazy. But uh, so uh, Krebs, after his site was attacked, uh, decided to go out and do a significant amount of research. And if you've never read this particular article on, on Krebs's website, this is a very interesting dive, but he dives into who this individual was, and that's how we found out that he was running this, this DDoS protection service, and at the same time, running one of the biggest IoT botnets in, in history. Uh, and eventually, due to some of the stuff that he put out, uh, the two, two of the people 
uh, pled guilty, and I don't think they actually went to jail. I think that was a recent development, but uh, but yeah, they they were caught. So, all right, tangent over. Uh, so, we talked about cred stuffing. We talked about botnets. What did Podium see? And that's kind of the idea behind this. Is back in December 2020, uh, Podium saw a large scale. Uh, botnet driven credential stuffing attack uh, over the course of the month. So uh, to give an idea of what is normal for Podium, at least at that time, usually we would see around uh, 1,500 unique IPs hitting us on, an, on any given day, uh, around 3,500 unique usernames in our authentication logs, and then in the entire month of November, around 44,000 unique IPs and 61,000 unique usernames. Uh, throughout the course of the month, this is a, gra or a chart of our, of our authentications. You can see we've got major spike, or a decent spike right here, another decent spike here, and then the mother of all spikes right there. Um, so on each of those days, uh, we had 41,000, 500 attempts in one hour, 190,000 attempts in one day on December 22nd, and then uh, between December 24th and December 26th, we saw 1.2 million. Uh, there were yeah around 26,700 unique malicious IPs. I'll talk about this a little bit more later, but actually classifying an IP as malicious was tricky, uh, and they attempted yeah around 2.1. 2.2 million usernames. Um, the reason this was interesting uh, was that we saw this, this initial attempt on December 2nd, almost like a, a POC of their, of their attack. Uh, and then that, that second attempt on the 23rd, like a second preparatory attempt, and then the massive spike on Christmas Day uh, over the course of Christmas Eve to the, the day following Christmas, which I think is really interesting because whoever was doing this, I believe that was very intentional as they assumed that most of the individuals who were watching these sites were probably off on vacation and probably weren't watching as much. So uh, I think, uh, and actually anecdotally, just last week over the Thanksgiving break, we saw more credential stuffing attacks during the Thanksgiving break. So I think that uh, holidays and vacation times are prime targets for uh, attackers to go after, uh, especially U.S. companies, U.S.-based com companies, because they know we're out on vacation, maybe not watching as closely. So, um, okay. So, quick analysis of some of the IP addresses that we saw. Uh, they were all over the world. Um, the the attempts were coming from basically every, every continent, um, and uh, mostly out of the United States, or then the United Kingdom, a whole bunch out of Russia, China, Germany, India, Netherlands, Canada, just everywhere. So um, I think, like I said before, we had seen those 23,000, or yeah, 23,000 IPs. Uh, what were the ASNs, the different organizations, owners of these IP addresses? Again, that also ranged. We had 425 different potential uh, ASNs, different groups that were owning these different IP addresses that were coming after us. So a broad variety of, um, of ownership across these IPs, uh, which leads me to believe even further that it was some form of, of botnet. Um, we, we plugged some of this information into a service called IP Quality Score. That service allows you to throw it an IP address and they have different fraud scores, classify whether it's a VPN, a proxy, multiple different things based on some of their information that they have. Uh, and when I threw all of the IP addresses that we had at it, uh, it classified 96% of them as proxies, 91% as VPNs, but a lot of that is, um, classified based on just the, the information that they've seen in the past and uh, also from the, the traffic that they see on their, uh, their honeypot devices. Uh, so, okay, so diving into a couple of these, Colo Crossing was the number one organization on this one. Uh, this is a United States-based co-location provider. Scamalytics classifies this as a potential fraud risk uh, and, and when I Googled 
Colo Crossing, one of the first things that came up was Colo Crossing abuse. So I think they're relatively well known for stuff getting uh, compromised, unfortunately. Um, I uh, blocked out a few of the IP addresses here just because I didn't want to actually list potentially compromisable sites on here. But um, a couple of the IP addresses, most of the ones that I went to go look at from the, the IPs that we saw. So like, for example, this was one of the IPs where we saw almost 6,000 requests, 6,000 uh, authentication attempts come at us. Uh, it's just some random website. Uh, and that was kind of the case across most of these IPs that I went to check out. It looked like there were just different varying services run. Um, when I jumped on Shodan, you could see lots of different ports exposed. So I think that these are just multiple different types of devices across a broad spectrum that have been compromised and put on whatever this potential botnet was. Uh, so this one was uh, a service that hit us with 5,000 requests, again, running some different uh, service uh, out of China. Um, this, and, and there was a there was a broad range as well. We saw some services hitting us. Some of these IPs hit us with 6,000 usernames, up to 6,000 usernames. Some of them hit us with only five. Uh, and so there was quite the the range as well. And so with this one, for example, they only had they only hit us with six usernames, and uh, it was just some other type of service running on this. So going across all of them, it was just. Pretty, pretty clear that there was a, a broad range of different types of devices uh, that were hitting us uh, that just further indicated that it was likely a, a botnet. So was this a targeted attack on Podium itself? Uh, I mean, I, I really doubt it. Um, we are out of the 102, sorry, out of the 2.1 million usernames that were attempted, only 102 of those were even uh, Podium users. Uh, and out of that, there were 92 failures, 10 successes. Luckily, we identified those quickly, worked with the customers, got those passwords reset, and we reached out and notified those individuals through our processes. Um, I, I think that, I mean, obviously, this was a large-scale botnet with the the tens of thousands of IPs that were hitting us. Um, and with each IP not hitting us with a predetermined amount of, uh, of attempts, it wasn't just like you had one hitting us with 500 and all of them hitting us with 500. I think that this was likely uh, a more distributed attack across multiple different services. So somebody grabbed a a bunch of credential dumps and threw them at multiple services. So I'm actually curious if anyone else saw something similar at this time frame, because my guess would be that a ton of other groups were hit with this. Um, we're not the biggest company in the world, and so I, I can't imagine that there weren't several other organizations that in your authentication logs, you could go back to December of this time frame and see something like this and if anybody else saw that and would like to talk to me about it i would love to hear about it because i think this was super interesting um okay so those were the ip addresses where the credentials come from uh there's a ton of different potentials obviously there's password dumps all over the place one that i think is particularly interesting is called collection number one uh this was a 770 million record collection that was released uh, back in January of 2019, uh, 1.1 billion different email and password combinations, 87 gigs of data, $45, which uh, it's kind of a steal. Um, the, the history behind this one's actually kind of interesting. There's a, a, a I don't know what you'd call it, I guess a hacker named Sanix, and they were the ones that kind of curated this whole collection. They released a series of different collections, collection number one, collections two through five. Number one was more credentials, two through five was a lot of uh, PII, uh, 25 billion records total, a whopping 840 gig of just straight data about people. Um, and a, a fun little drama that went down here was uh, Sanix had a rival data broker um, named Azitej. 
and uh, Azatej just bought it and leaked the whole thing for free. So uh, they, yeah, there's apparently drama between your data brokers out there, which is interesting. Uh, and I think both of them were eventually, yes, yeah, both were eventually uh, arrested in May 2020. So uh, crime doesn't pay, kids. Uh, okay, so are are you, am I, or is anyone in one of those collections? I mean, most likely, just from a, from a sheer statistical uh, st aspect and also just being on the internet, you are almost assuredly in one of these data breaches, um, unless you are completely off the grid. Uh, so a very useful resource, if you've never used it before, haveibeenpwned.com, allows you to go in, throw your email address in, and it will show you whether or not you have been in a, one of these particular breaches. Uh, so what I did was I took all of the usernames from the, that we saw attempted on us, I took a sample of 10,000 and I hit the Have I Been Pwned API uh, and ran it through to see what information I was able to find and 87% uh, of those emails, Have I Been Pwned, was able to say, yeah, they, they, they were in some sort of a data breach and it, the API gives you the different data breaches, breaches that each one of them were involved in and you can kind of see collection number one, was a very common, oh, collection number one was also referred to as anti-public, but uh, collection number one is a common commonality amongst the, the sample that I went through. Um, the interesting thing was that there were, yeah, around 1,300 that were not in the Have I Been Pwned database, which I think is interesting because that means that there's a, a decent chunk, you know, 13% of those which obviously are breached credentials of some sort that uh, Have I Been Pwned doesn't have, which um, there's probably a, a good chunk on the, on, the dark, on the dark web that haven't been picked up by the, the guy who runs that site yet, but um, just, just goes to show that it's not a, a perfect means of protection. Um, okay, so jumping into some uh, recommendations. Uh, Have I Been Pwned actually has a service, a free service called the, the domain monitoring, the domain search. So if you work for a company uh, like, uh, like we work for Podium and you have some sort of a domain, if you can prove ownership of that domain, you can submit that to Have I Been Pwned and any time uh, one of your uh, emails or anything to do with your domain pops up in a new data breach, uh, they will send you an email uh, and let you know, uh, send you an alert about it. So this I would highly recommend if you have any organizations to go and sign up for this, uh, you'll get notifications when any of your, your users may pop up there. Um, okay, so obviously the biggest problem here is password reuse, which uh, just, needs needs to stop if 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 everyone is not aware of why password reuse is a problem this is exactly why right your your password is leaked in any given number of uh data breaches and it's nigh unto impossible to prevent that from happening and so if you use the same password across all your different sites your other sites will be compromised in these types of of cred stuffing attacks uh so i would recommend Get a password manager. LastPass and 1Password are two good ones. Um, they also offer dark web monitoring on both of those services where if one of your credentials pops up in a, uh, a data breach somewhere, they will alert you about it and uh, let you know that you need to uh, rotate that password. So good services. Um, brief discussion about detection. So. Uh, how are we detecting this kind of thing? Because it's easy for this to slip through the cracks in terms of the, the just large amounts of data, uh, mountains of data that you might see in authentication logs. Um, one thing that's particularly easy, or not easy, but a good way to look for it is to look for the high numbers of failed authentications uh, with unique usernames. So if an IP address has failed authentications on a high number of unique usernames, then that is very indicative that that IP is attempting a credential stuffing attack of some sort. Um, and then also just focusing on successful attempts because honestly, these types of cred stuffing attacks are gonna happen 
all the time, right? It's just it's just the nature of the space. There are lots of things we can do to protect against them and defend with CAPTCHAs and rate limiting and, and whatnot, but uh, they're gonna happen. So it's not necessarily, especially if you have limited resources in your security team, it's not necessarily prudent to go and chase the rabbit on every single time somebody launches one of these, but you do wanna know if there's ever a success. And so if you can identify a malicious IP based on a high number of unique usernames like that, and then correlate it across to any potential successful authentications from that IP address, uh, you can set up an alert and, and uh, protect your, your users. So, and then just overall anomaly alerts, of course, if you see large spikes like that, then there's something worth looking into often. Uh, okay, so in summary, implement password managers, use your auth logs, look for anomalies, kind of what we were talking about with detection, uh, utilize services like have I been pwned. Have I been pwned isn't the only one, but it's a good one. Uh, implement rate limiting CAPTCHAs on your authentication flows and be careful over your holiday breaks because uh, I think it's a prime time for attackers to come after us. So uh, that's it. Any questions? Okay, thank you.